All right, guys, so welcome to the channel. Um, today we're going to be working on a 2006 Pontiac G6 V6 GT, and we're going to be replacing the strut assembly. Now, this is different than the way that it was done back in the bad old days when you'd have to compress the spring and remove the upper bearing plate and then put the spring, the old spring, onto this new strut and put the bearing plate on and index it and all of that. We don't have to do any of that because now, nowadays, you can buy the strut with the spring and the bearing plate. Everything is set up and ready to go for about 150 bucks. So that's what we're going to be doing here today. So I'm going to get a socket and I'm going to attach it to the axle nut for the CV axle. And I'm going to break that loose and spin that off of there before I lift the car off the ground. So 36 is pretty good. This is 36 millimeter and once i get that loose i'll knock the lug, lug nuts loose so here's our strut assembly that we'll be taking out you can see we've got a brake hose attached to the strut and then we've also got the abs sensor bracket also so this has to come loose and then we've got our tie rod end that has to be released as well and then we've got to take the brakes loose that has to come out of the way the axle will eventually have to come out and we'll have to disconnect the tie rod end from the knuckle. So most likely, we might be able to leave the, the tie rod end in there, but um, yeah, these bolts, these two bolts will have to come out and then we'll see if we got enough room to slide everything in and out without having to take that tie rod end loose. Um, and then up top here, this is the upper bearing plate. Typically you have three bolts, three nuts that have to be taken out. And that one's actually broken off. It's actually been that way since we bought the car. So um, in the box, there'll be fresh nuts. And we're just going to, this is where the top of the strut mounts up here. So that's the process. Looks like it's pretty well straightforward. It's just a matter of taking everything loose and getting it done. So let's get to it. So that's loose. And again, I'm just focusing on the strut here. So this is going to have to come off. It looks like probably a 10 millimeter is going to take that off. And that'll release this bracket for the brake hose. That's all good. Here, right there. Which will, uh, it looks like it fits into a slot. This might actually pull it right out of there. Yeah, there we go. So it's slotted in there. All right. And this is going to have to come out too. So it's it's going to be a squeeze on that clip, and then be a bit of a challenge. Once I start to back that nut off of there, what's going to happen is uh, the ball inside the socket here is going to start to spin. And so it's going to be difficult to get this to come off of there without holding it from the backside or without damaging sway bar, the sway bar link, probably 17 or something. And then I'll probably have to come in here with needle nose vice grips or something, or maybe a wrench if it fits, to hold that still while I back this off. It's a six point, so just this. There we go. So yeah, it's spinning it behind there. As I turn this, if you can see the boot is spinning. So I said I was going to use maybe some needle nose vice grips, but I can see that that's not really going to be feasible here. So the um, sway bar link. There we go. You gotta be careful not to damage this wire. Maybe I'll disconnect it just to be safe. Try to keep from damaging that. We damage that and we're in for a lot of money to replace that wire or the sensor. All right, so now we got <clears throat> a lot of the challenging stuff removed. Now I'm gonna work on these two bolts that hold the steering knuckle 
to the strut assembly, and then I'm going to work on that upper bearing plate. By the way, it's always a good idea to check the parts before you begin to disassembly or get too far into it to verify that what you have is correct. Okay, so it's not actually a nut on the other side. It's just, it's got two sides to it that are cut for holding it. And so you would hold that with like an open end wrench. You can't use a box end. You got to use the open end wrench, which is this part right here. This is the box end. This is the open end. So we'll be holding it with that if we need to, and I'll be working on pulling this nut off. So now these are loose. I can go ahead and pull the nuts off the top. All right, so now, At this point, we're pretty much good to go. All I got to do is hammer out those two, and I should be able to drop that out and get it out of there. But to be on the safe side, I got to be super careful of these boots get damaged really easy. And if I damage that boot, I'm going to have to replace it. And it's almost cheaper just to replace the whole axle. So I don't want to get into that. So this comes down to why I pulled that out of there like that. I want to try and get that axle out of the way. And to do that, I'm going to have to see if I can turn this far enough to do that. So the way this one is designed is there's there's a slot right there. And so this is a pinch bolt that holds the ball joint in place. And it's a little bit easier to describe once I have it out of there. But with this removed, maybe take a chisel and open this up a little bit. And then this should flop right out of there. And that'll make this whole process of what I'm trying to do here quite a bit easier. So let's try that. Turn the wheel the other way. Somebody's going to slack that I had to get that axle out. like brake hose is going to hold me up here so I better take the brake caliper off. There we go. Now that the axle's out of harm's way, I can pound out that final bolt and then I can just get strut out. Again, I'm going to spin the nut on there. I'm just backing the nut off as it gets further and further in all the way to the strut is laying on this pin, so it's not going to come out super neat. You can feel it is loose. I'll try to keep some weight off it. It'll come right out. There we go. Turn up the loose control on that thing. There we go. Alright, let's see how this yeah, that boots, the joint's really sloppy. So we're gonna have to change that out. So that's a bad ball joint. So a good ball joint, you, sh you probably wouldn't be able to move it with your fingers at all. You can see how sloppy and loose that is. So I'm gonna have to order up a replacement control arm, lower control arm for this car. And then, so I'll swap that out and then I'll go back to the strut. In the right orientation and then putting these on it. All right, watch out for the CV axle. I 
I just got my hands inside the spring thing indexed properly when you put it in. But this is the way it goes. The hat, the bearing plate has a flat edge on it, and I can see where it was by the rust mark that's up in the tower from the other side. So these are what's called a cam ground nut. So what that is, is a nut that's basically just squeezed. And because of that, it's self-locking. I'm not sure you'll be able to see this on camera. It has kind of an oval shape to it. See the oval kind of at the bottom and at the top here, how it's squeezed in. So that's, that's a cam ground nut. So it'll start to go on and then it'll kind of stop. So that's where we got to run it down with our ratchet. So as you can see, it's now turned. So we need to spin this this way so that it's lined up with everything. I'm going to have to lift this up, put the axle in, and kind of snap it on there all without damaging this or anything else while I'm at it. Spin it more like that. So I've created a condition where I've got this hung up here. And so now, yes, it's close to the boot, the control arm simply in the way. So I can pry down the control arm now, finish getting the axle in, and then get the ball joint set underneath in the spindle where it belongs. And what I'm doing now is I'm sighting down the hole where the bolt's going to go through that's going to fit into that groove. And as we can see, it's pretty darn good. We can tap this in. As long as it doesn't take a lot of pressure to tap it in, we should be good. Here's a punch. Yeah. So there's going to be some tension on it. So let's push it in. To push in on it while I press the bolt in. There we go. All right, beautiful. All right, next we'll get that uh, soy bar link on. Okay, connect that ABS wire. Attached to the bracket, which uh, probably didn't need to take it out of the bracket because the bracket comes off the strut. We'll go to the brake caliper and get him on there. Click, click, all right. Get this down in there where it belongs. There we go. Now we can put that nut on there. So 
so that is job done. Now all I gotta do is put the car down and uh, go ahead and spin the axle nut on that axle, torque it to the right specification, put the wheel on it, and we're good to go. We're all done here. Yeah, and that's all she wrote.